Hi, this is Josh from Cody Co. Farm and Nursery, and today we're looking at um, our harvest of West African yams, and we're going to talk about this plant and uh, the potential it might have for gardens in Florida. So a lot of us are familiar with growing true yams, which are in the Dioscoria group, um, but most people are growing the winged yam, it's called, or water yam, or greater yam, which is Dioscoria alata. And that is a very productive root crop in Florida, but unfortunately, um, it produces these aerial bulbs that fall everywhere and it's become naturalized in Florida. And for that reason, it's, a, uh, it's classed as a invasive exotic in the state of Florida. So it's technically not legal to grow that yam and definitely not legal for me to sell it as a nursery. Um, that's where this comes in. So this is a totally different species of yam. When you're talking about taro, cassava, sweet potato, you're talking about one species. And then within that, there's different varieties. With yams, you're talking about many species. There's 600 species of Dioscoria. Something like 60 of those are edible. And then within that, there's 10 or so domesticated species. They come from different continents, um, different parts of the world. Domesticated meaning they've been changed from their wild form and they become a uh, cultivated crop um, that's highly useful for food in some part of the world. So this is the uh, West African yam. This is one of the most important food crops traditionally in West Africa. And then um, through the transatlantic slave trade made it into Jamaica and other Caribbean islands. So if you're from West Africa, you're from Jamaica, the yam that people would refer to, that most people would know about eating, would be this. This is Dioscoria rotundata. Um, unlike the, the, the winged yam, which is wild in Florida, this does not produce the aerial tubers. And for that reason, this is not on any restricted uh, species list for Florida. And in fact, it's virtually impossible for this to spread from the spot that it's planted because it doesn't produce these bulbs. And also for reasons that are a little too complex to get into this video, um, this will never produce viable seed because they're dioecious, meaning they need a male and a female for proper pollination. And this is just one clone. So there's virtually no way for this to spread out of your garden. Um, which makes this a, a really interesting alternative. On top of that, these are very smooth, nice shape, and easy to peel compared to the wing yams, which are typically knobby and gnarly and covered in roots. There are some varieties that aren't so bad. They're very hard to work with in the kitchen, and they're kind of a pain to dig up, where these produce these consistent, smooth, nice shaped uh, tubers. Um, so, and on top of that, the a lot of yams are considered to be inferior in a lot of the cultures where these are from. People that are from West Africa, from what I read, really at the end of the day, they want to be eating this because it's starchier and denser and better tasting. This is a very high quality food. And um, for some years, I was trying to identify a variety of this that would grow well in Florida and finally discovered this one. We call it Columbia because the sticker on it indicated it was imported from Columbia. And I think why this one does well and others don't is due to possibly due to uh, differences in nematode uh, tolerances. From reading a book called Yam in West Africa, I learned that nematodes are a big issue on some varieties of the species. Um, another difference of this in the Dioscoria alata is that this breaks dormancy much earlier in the, uh, in the season. The alata will not start growing and breaking dormancy like this for another six weeks or so. This is already trying to grow. It's very important to understand that yams can't be planted at whenever you want. They um, have a very fixed dormancy and growth period. So here in Florida, this the schedule of this is basically from March 1st, roughly, it pops up, and then it goes dormant sometime in December or January. So behind me is all the dormant vines. Um, 
And it's only when it's in this period of re-sprouting can you cut this up to make multiple planting pieces. If you cut it up before it's in active growth, they basically rot before they sprout. We are gonna be selling these planting pieces. We'll, we'll cut and treat them by dipping in lime, so they uh, agricultural lime, so they don't rot. And then we'll mail these planting pieces. And then the secondary planting pieces will sprout. And then once they've sprouted, we'll also offer them for sale. Um, it's critical to understand that yams are, true yams are not sweet potatoes, they're not related, and they're climbing vines. So we'll splice in a pitcher. In the rainy season, this yam was totally swallowing this tree that I'm next to right here, and I planted the yams in a ring around this legume tree to give them a trellis to climb. You can build a structure, but they do quite well climbing up trees. The only thing you need to be sure is that there's not um, tree roots inhibiting the growth of the plant and also obstructing you from digging them up. Um, we could really go on all day about uh, these plants because they're so under known in the United States and but this has big potential for gardens in Florida. It's a relatively easy food crop to go to grow um, compared to something like potato. This is a tropical plant that loves our climate here does fine in our soils. Uh, these can be grown without irrigation, without much inputs at all. So we hope you'll consider getting some of this going in your garden. Um, if you're watching this and it's springtime, we'll probably have this listed on our web store. Unfortunately, it's a little tricky to offer at other times of the year because it has such a fixed um, seasonality with the way that it grows. So that makes it a little bit fickle to propagate. The other thing that's unfortunate about this compared to the Alata is it's very hard to scale up in planting material. So best case scenario off of this is I maybe get three new plants off of what was one plant. Or on the other one, you could turn one plant into a hundred plants in one season. So it's been kind of slow going for us to scale up with this. Um, so thanks for watching. We'll hope you'll consider growing the Dioscoria rotundata in your garden and have a nice day.